This morning is my second time out with the Sigma 60 to 600, hoping to actually get to use this lens. Other than the one shot I took this week in my backyard of a hawk, I really haven't had a chance yet to put this lens to use. And I'm hoping that today is the day. It's been a rough week and I have just been on my ass sick all week long. You can probably hear it in my voice. Today's the first day this week that I'm not coughing like crazy, that my throat doesn't feel torn to shreds. So that first exposure that I've taken with this lens, it met my expectations. And don't read into that like I'm being passive aggressive. Like between what I paid and knowing that this is a new lens, I have a base level expectation of image quality that I expect to see. And so far, that very first test in my backyard, it met that base expectation. So now we're out to see if it holds up to those expectations. Now I could do just some boring test where I set up some books and coffee mugs in my house and take some test exposures. And I might do that at some point. Um, but if you've watched my videos in the past, I really prefer to get out in the real world and use my gear, okay? I don't buy this gear just to make YouTube videos. I legit buy this gear to actually use it, to do photography. I mean, what a bold concept to actually buy camera gear that you intend to use for photography. It's insane. Insane. Who would have thought? And I just spotted a badger. Oh, man, it's going to be hard to get a good shot of this. He's a ways off. He's still going away from me. I caught a glimpse of him scurrying across the road. It looked like he's carrying something, probably a gopher. There's a lot of gophers out here. And badgers are one of the predators that really keep gophers in check in this region. He's out of sight now. That's usually how badger sightings go around here. They're very brief, very quick, and uh, they don't stop and pose ever. Not that most animals do, but sometimes some animals will stop at least look at you for a second and give you some opportunity. Badgers, no. Nope. Well, how about a hawk shot that's not in my backyard? Do those count? Uh, if so, let's see what we can get here. All right, let's see if he lets me get closer. And that's all he let me get. It's pretty typical of hawks. Even though there's been a few occasions where I've pulled right up on him, right next to the fence, and they just sat there looking at me. Not that I'm complaining. That was pretty dang cool. So I know what some of you are probably thinking. Like, this isn't wildlife photography. You're not in camouflage, out in a blind, out in a field or in the woods for hours on end. Uh, I know I'm not. I, I do have that stuff and I have done that. Uh, wildlife photography doesn't have to be outside in a ghillie suit crawling across the ground with a camera. All right, you're outdoors filming wild animals. That's wildlife photography. Plus today, I can't really go and hike around. Uh, I have the dogs, as you can see. Now the little white one, oh, she's hiding. I've been taking her a lot with me. You've probably seen her in other videos. She's a pretty good photography companion. She's got it figured out. I'll hook her leash onto my belt and she stays close. Not too much of a nuisance. This one, Ansel, Ansel. Okay, he's just gonna whimper. Um, he's a six month old puppy. He's not really attuned for this yet. He's not really used to riding in the car. In fact, he vomited on the floor on the way out here, which is wonderful. I get to clean that up when I get home. Yeah, he's not too good yet <laughs> outdoors. He'll get really, really excited, freak out, spin in circles, bark. You know, all the things that I don't need to deal with when I'm trying to handle a super telephoto lens. So, 
On days like this, when I got the dogs, nobody to watch them, we're in the car, and that's where I'm shooting from is the car. Believe me, there are days where I do want to get out there in the field, lay down in my blind, and relax and take photos. But also, too, I'm still recovering from the pollen, you know, seasonal hay fever. And it's probably not the best time for me to be out there. In fact, driving around right now with the windows down probably isn't the best either. But I definitely think uh, out there lying in the grass, out in the woods, would probably be worse. This is the lesser of two evils, I think. So this one, she's a miniature Shiba Inu. I've had her for two and a half years. And she's pretty good. She's a good hiking dog. Pretty good photography dog. Generally kind of knows when dad's handling a camera to not be too big of a butthead. Rescued her from a really immature couple. They were like, she's a lot of work. We can't handle her. She chews up things. But they weren't exercising her. She was just a puppy then. No exercise, no training, no interaction, no anything. Turns out the dog was fine. But they were literally just going to toss her in the pound. They paid like $5,000 for this dog. And they just gave her to me because it was too much work. And then they decided to go have a baby because, you know, clearly that's less work. Got this one last November. He's a cattle dog mix. So his dad's a cattle dog, purebred. Mom's a border collie mix. And people are like, oh, you got a cattle dog and a border collie mix. Those are some of the two smartest breeds. They are. However, Ansel, his name's Ansel. Uh, <laughs> I don't think I got the smartest one in the litter. He's a sweet dog. He's very, very sweet, very loving, very cuddly. He's not too brilliant. He really isn't. I'm sorry, but uh, he's not too terribly brilliant. He means well. And he's getting used to the car. He's starting to figure out how much fun it is to stick your head out the window. All right, it's quite a ways off, but I do have a bobcat really far out there. I'll try and show you. He's quite a ways out there. So even a 600 mil, that's as close as I could get. Probably hang out here for a second and see if he gets closer. I doubt it. He knows I'm here. I'm not hidden. I'm not camouflaged. Sometimes they don't care. Sometimes they just don't care. Like they just walk right past the car. Other times, they have anything. They see anything that's human related, they'll go the other way. You never know. You never know with these cats. All right, he's gone out of view uh, down this hill. I can't see him. The road does go down that way, so I'm going to take a chance and drive forward and hopefully get lucky. For a moment, I thought I was going to get lucky because he started kind of coming towards me a little bit. He's still a ways away, but you know, the direction was towards me. So I was like, if I just sit here quietly and they don't bark, maybe, just maybe. And then he angled away and went down over here. I'll try to pull over here and just park. Hopefully he's not spooked off. Hopefully they stay calm. They haven't seen him yet. I know they haven't. They're too busy knowing each other. So I backed up to where I was before because he, he relocated and he's now a little bit closer and I might actually get an okay photo. I've been here for about an hour now. Uh, the bobcat, he moved out in front of my vehicle and he started inching closer crawling while he was hunting and he started getting close enough where I thought I might have a good opportunity right up until the point that some truck tore down the road and 
scared him back off on the field. He sat there for another 15, 20 minutes, and then he started crawling my direction again, but then he kind of disappeared back behind that hill in those bushes. Uh, I may, I may have to relocate and see if I can find him again. I don't know where he wandered off to. Just vanished. They can do that. Um, Animals let you see them most of the time. It's just how it is. You know, out here for about an hour watching him, hoping he would uh, get closer so I can get a better, closer exposure. That'd be a great like icing on the cake shot for breaking in this lens. I uh, just didn't get it. He finally got tired and said, uh, I'm done with this guy. Screw him in his new lens. And he disappeared. Another bobcat sighted. That may be him, but man, he's, if it is him, he moved quite a distance in a really short time. And he could have ran. But then again, out here, there are a lot of bobcats. And I've come across two in very tight areas before. He's up on the other side of the road now. Just would stop and turn. Oh, I might have got that. That was great. That was really awesome. You know, I could sit at home and just set up a scene and just do technical photos with this lens to do image quality tests. And I might do that, right? And I did that recently for some filters. I just haven't published that video yet. But to me, there's just something, something more genuine, something more real about taking a lens like this out in the field and doing what you're supposed to do with it. Capturing a bobcat, that is just, that's icing on the cake. If I don't see anything else rest of the day, that's perfect. I don't care. I don't care. That was awesome because you can't script these. These are not scripted videos. I've done scripted videos, and sometimes it's appropriate. Sometimes it makes sense. But sometimes I want to do something authentic and real like this. And so you can't script this. You can't plan this. This is a real day out with the Sigma 60 to 600, driving around with my two dogs. And that was a real bobcat. And I am really, really, really genuinely happy right now. I needed that, not just for this video. I just, I needed that moment because I've had a tough week and that just made everything better. I'm so happy. Well, I drove around for about 45 more minutes. It's now about quarter after 12 and this whole area is starting to get busy with visitors and hikers. So I'm going to head out. I saw some elk off in the distance and a coyote but nothing quite as interesting as the bobcat. So that was definitely the high note of the day. And on that, I think I'm gonna call it, head on in for the day and let these guys out of the car. They're getting a little anxious to get out and run around. So aren't you, aren't you? Yes, yeah, you're whimpering a lot. So this was a good day. This was finally a great opportunity to really break in this lens and just get out and do a little bit of photography. That always feels really good. Well, I hope you enjoyed this. I definitely enjoyed it. And as always, thanks for tuning in and I'll see you again next time.